Hello, it's Sarah, and I'm back, guys. I've been busy. I'm going to show you what I've been up to. Anywho, uh, we're back to finish, hopefully, the little gnome we started, the bee gnome. It's a Renee Mullins pattern, Plum Purdy Designs. Um, I will put it in the description. Um, so what we're going to do now is the shading, the part that kind of gives the piece depth. Um, it's shading and highlighting. You do, you get the same, you get shading and highlighting by floating. The technique is called floating. And I'm going to do a little tutorial for you here, and then we'll move on to do that to our guy. I'm just going to move everything off of here and get ready. But what we're going to shade first is, let's say, his jumper, she calls it. Base coat the jumper golden straw. And so I'm going to be able to do the little, um, just this little part and this little part. And then shade along the bottom of the sleeve, under the flowers, and lightly under the beard, around the beard with burnt sienna. So the idea is we're going to darken it up against the beard so that it looks like it's sitting on top of, you know, to give the, it the shadow underneath. And then the highlighting is just the opposite. We'll go with a lighter color on the brightest areas. So to float, what it, what it means is the paint is going to float across the bristles. And I like to use uh, an angle brush to float. This is considered a half inch angle. And like I said in my previous videos, all brands kind of are different. Um, this is a 3 8 inch angle. I prefer to use at least a half inch because, let's see if I have my old school. Like I could float with this big 3 quarter inch brush as well. It's a little thick. Um, but I, I am very rough on my brushes. All right, I don't want to talk too much. Just want to get to the point. Um, a float means the paint is going to float across the bristles on the water. So when you float, you're on water. So you're using water. So I'm going into my water bucket. And I'm just going to do it on my. This is palette paper. And in the craft store, let's see if I have the. No, I pulled the back off of it. But it's called paper palette it'll be called or um, and see this one I probably got like at a cheaper I think I got this at a cheaper place but it's like a glossy or a, a shiny surface I've used the Tim Holtz craft mat to float on as well that has like a shiny surface to it it's a little it's different but alright so water you need water to float gotta have water in your brush how much? Well, that's going to depend on how good you get at loading your brush. So what we're going to do is just practice loading our brush with the paint in order to get a float. Now, so I'm blotting it, and you can actually see the water pull out. And I'm just going to corner load. I'm just going to take a little bit of paint on that corner, and then I'm going to put it down on the palette. So I'm going to push down and show you what it looks like. So... It's darkest there and it does start to fade, but now I'm going to work the paint down the bristles. I'm going to float the paint across the water. And I'm, if you watch me, you know, I'm going to come down a little more. I don't like to zoom because I always forget and then I get caught up. But what happens is you get dark, medium, and light values and then water. There is water on my palette. You can't really see it, but you can sometimes see the bubbles over here because there's just water over here and there's paint over here and I kind of want to meet the two. So I just keep going and you can go this way. See that bubbles? It's starting to get a little color in it. But you never want the water to get paint in it. So this is loaded. Then when you go to the piece, I'm going to go, I'm putting the color part. See, I'm too close. Let me come up. And I'm a pity patter. And I'm just going to push and slide the brush in that area. And that was a very uh, kind of advanced way to do it. Let me go back. Now look, when I load again, I just go right back here and pick up what's left because there's a little bit of water there. Let me just go here. And I'll just put this right here. It's too small of an area. I need more water. I can tell I'm coming up. I can tell that my brush, let's go back here and look. There's really nothing left. 
you can tell when the brush starts to split you need more water so you go in and I kind of clean it I rub it along the bottom to get that paint out of it come back and blot I'm just gonna wipe this off so I still have plenty of water there's water on the ferrule and I just do it again I pick up that little bit of color put it down on the palette and work my way back and forth now there's a lot more water this time I can see it really puddling let me show you and this is what you'll you'll need to perfect whatever's happening on the palette is what's going to happen on your piece so is, if it's looking watery here it's going to be watery on your piece if it's look you know so what I'll do is this is way too wet so I just blot again with the paint on it take a little water out of my brush come back over here and pick up what's there and now I have a perfectly loaded brush it goes from dark to medium to water so I'm gonna come in on here this hopefully is dry mm. you really don't you need to give the paint time to dry before you put your brush down it again it'll it will pick up what you put down and I'm a pity patter I've I've been in lots of classes lots of painting experience where people like to do it one and done and I'm not a one and done you can always go back in and pick up um, and make it darker this is called a mop brush and when you think mop you think water and all I'm doing is touching the water gently you can pull the color over into the water or just soften if you got a line what I want to do is grab a q-tip always have a q-tip and I just feel like I got a little of it on the white you have to be careful because see I definitely picked it up so I'm just I think when I'm teaching I'm not as careful as if I was doing it myself okay so look at this float right here it's working but there's kind of a line you can see where it doesn't just fade off into the yellow it kind of goes brown line so I might just clean that up take a wet paper towel and cuz I mean I'm q-tip I mean and just because it really hasn't set up yet you have time if you hate it if you make a stripe and you just don't like it or stick with the stripe for now this is a beginner piece let yourself be free to take the risk make this paint put the paint on there and just accept what it is right now <laughs> oh my god I hear myself Al-Anon um, acceptance is big okay so I'm gonna reload my brush I'm gonna corner load and go right back here and see what's happening do I have enough water enough color yeah I think I do and I'm gonna gently patiently put the paint down I'm gonna intentionally put it I'm not just gonna force my will and that looks much better oh my god I sound like um there you go all right so it, it just looks softer um, where else did I need to do it on here underneath the flowers so that's what floating is that's what it means you're floating the paint across the bristles of your brush on the water that's in your bristles so you corner load get a little bit on that corner and then just start working it across the bristles floating it across but you never float it all the way to the end you always want water and then I'm gonna put it here I'm going to tap it in so I go in with that point all the bristles are touching the surface not just the color because I want the water too and then if I see how it, it totally faded out that was a good one um, I still need some more here so and then I tipped it this way you can go either way the brush is loaded you can pull or push I'm going to start here and swivel around if you put your brush down it will leave a line of water as long as it's just a line of water see I'm just darkening that up I went back again and the reason I can make it all the way across the piece is because I have enough water on my brush if I didn't 
it would just stop. You can't force it. You have to load the brush right. You have to use the tool correctly. Oh my God. I'm just thinking if any of my Al pals heard this video, they would just hear so much al -Anon in here. <laughs> because it really is about <clears throat> practicing. It's about practicing. And without practice, you can't just, like I said in the last video, you can, I can't just pick up a flute and play or get sit down at the piano and play. I would have to practice, 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 and it takes time and patience. And really, what you want to master is the technique because it's not about the piece, this bumblebee. It's about what's happening over here. So for Alan on, it's what's happening in my head. <laughs> and then putting it into work, it to work. So, all right, let's move on. That's enough of that. I'm going to float the hat. It says, uh, highlight along the top centers of the stripes that remain golden straw with a brush mix of light buttermilk and golden straw. So I'll show you how you would do that. So here's, I'm going to show you what a brush mix is and a float. So it said a brush mix. So I'm just putting some light buttermilk, hopefully, yeah, and golden straw. Where is my golden straw right here? And because we're bottle babies, these acrylics, a person who took an art class, like an actual color art class, there's only, what, like seven colors on the color wheel? I forget. And then there's secondary colors and all that stuff. I never learned to paint that way. I never took an art class, of uh, an official art class. I only learned how to decorative paint, and that, so I'm a bottle baby. <laughs> all these colors are created for you. But you can literally, that's how oil painters have always done it. They mix their own color. If they need a color, they mix it. And that's why the palette is so, it has color all over it anyway. But a brush mix is just that. So again, I have water on my brush. I'm going to blot. I pick up a little bit of buttermilk, put it down, pick up a little bit of, what was it, straw, and put it down. And now that's considered, I'm going to put a little more buttermilk, I mean light buttermilk. Now I've got a, a version of those two colors. Now that's a lot of paint right there, so I'm going to use that, but first I want to rinse my brush. I'm going to rinse my brush just paint, I mean just water, and then come back over here and pick up this color. And now I can come up to my, what I want to do and get you to see is I'm going to start with all my bristles on the surface and then I'm going to pivot and then I'm going to turn, okay? So you're starting to push the color up to the center. You want it in the center and then you pivot and pull it this way. And that's a very, I need more buttermilk, I think. So I'm just going to come over here while my brush is dirty, and I'm going to pick up more light buttermilk and mix it right back into that yellow. Now I have a lighter shade. Plenty of paint. Rinse my brush. Blot. Come back to this, what I just mixed it up. Now I'm going to come to do the same thing on this stripe. I start with this. Oh, my fingers wet. And pivot and pull. But I can see that much better. It's very, very subtle and hers looks even lighter. So there's prop, there could be another float that she's doing. I like it bright, so I might just go in with light buttermilk. I, I do that sometimes. We have, we can make, we know, we get the information, and then we can make our own choices. <laughs> Let's see. So it's, let me, I'm just seeing if we're going to bump it up with light buttermilk. So the hat. Uh, mix, and then it says shade with burnt sienna. These stripes will be dotted using a stylus, okay? But, um... And light buttermilk so here's why I didn't I don't want to bump it up all the way to light buttermilk because the dots are going to be light buttermilk I want there to be variation but it there is no wrong you do what you like what makes you feel better all right so I'm reload I'm gonna just went into water I'm gonna come back to this color that we mixed hopefully that'll be enough paint 
but I'm picking it up as best I can because I want to brighten this. Start here and push it and pivot and pull. The reason I'm pivoting my brush is because I'm leaving the water line. So when you put the brush down, this is a very advanced, but when you put the brush down, it will leave the line. So you'll see the color and then the water. So if what I like to do is I start here so I can leave that line here. You see what I'm doing? I'm pushing it across. All the bristles are on the surface. So anyway, it's looking like something. Uh, highlight the hands and nose with titanium white. So I'll do that. I'm just going to skip around. Now remember, we got to do the nose, the little nose like that. Oh, you know what? I think I need to shade here. We haven't shaded our beard yet. But I'm going to get some titanium white. You only need a tiny bit. Floating does not use a lot of paint. You do not need to put a lot of paint out. So I'm going to, again, corner load. This whole piece is going to be done the same way. Put it down and work the bristles back and forth. It's hard to see with white, so I'll just go ahead and do it. Gently. This is going to be a little hard. I'm going to hold it at the bottom. But again, I'm just going to put, let me come in and show you how I do this. I'm going to push the paint along the top edge. All the bristles are on the surface. I'm going to let it dry. I could mop it, which I kind of want to because it looks a little whiny. But I can go back and do that again. You just have to let it dry. What else? I got to do the hands. I think she wants me to highlight the hand down here. You know what? I need to shade right there, too. I need to shade up against the uh, sleeve. Where's his other hand? Right? Nope. Oh, right here. So I have to shade this, too. Now, shading, that we didn't shade yet on the face. Let's see. Lightly shade along the bottom of the nose and hands with burnt sienna. And this is burnt sienna, so I'm going to grab a little bit of that. The bottom, it said. So here. I'm going to put a little bit between the thumb and the hand, too. But let me finish... Uh, I'm going to finish this little part right here. And then on the nose, I'm going to do the opposite of what I just did on... Actually, let me double check. Because it does look a little pink. I think she does burnt sienna with watermelon spice. Float along the bottom of the nose over the burnt sienna. Okay, so first we're going to go burnt sienna, and then we're going to go over it with watermelon spice. And I don't want this to be too, too much, just subtle. And I'm a heavy hand, so that means I put a lot of paint on my brush. Just doing the opposite of what I just did with the uh, light buttermilk. You don't want to touch it because you will pick it up. Um, it just looks naked on here. So let me, let me look at my yellow stripes. Like, I don't love this. I'm just going to take a Q-tip, and even though it's been on there for a while, I can get it off still. It's not sealed, and it's water-based. So I just didn't like how it looked. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm a little picky. I'm being a per I, will, I don't want you guys to, but I can do this because I'm kind of like a professional. Um, I just didn't like the way it looked. 
because I think when I'm teaching I, I don't take the time to uh, time take the time to take my time it just looks softer so I'll have to go along here It looks better um yeah and I want to go one more place on his I just want to go I'm picking up this paint from right here right here and it would be darkest here because anyway this is such a cutesy piece I don't need to oh and you didn't even see that's why I don't like zooming what about the bottoms of these on the hat? Shade the sides of the stripes with that will remain with burnt sienna. So now I'm going to do the opposite with burnt sienna. And I'm just going to go from one side. All the bristles are on the surface, guys. You need the water too. You don't just need the color. That will be where you fall short, if, if at all. Using a bigger brush doesn't matter because I can load this so that there's only paint right here and the rest is water. So the water is not going to affect anything else, you know? I'm going to get a little more paint. See, I got water on the black. I can see the shine. But, but see, it's just water. It'll melt. Um, what else? So, let's see. The wings are shaded lightly with cocoa. Shade again with a brush mix of cocoa and a little sable brown. I don't know what cocoa is. I don't have cocoa. Um, is that what you use to base coat? No, I don't know what color cocoa is because I don't have it. I mean, it sounds like it's a brown. I have sable brown. And we're really just darkening. So I'm just going to use sable brown and it'll be fine. I'm going to put a little sable brown. And we're going to shade the wings. She doesn't have it there, but I would definitely put it here because it's where the wing is coming from behind. She just has it. Oh, boy, that was a lot of paint. So I put a lot of paint. I'm walking away from it because I don't want that much paint. I want this to be light. She just has it here. So defining the bottom of the wing and then here. Oops, but see how I just took that off? I'll take the whole thing off. The water touched that float when I was doing this. So you should always start here and then go here. But I'm going to take the whole thing off just with my wet paper towel. Take it off. Flip my paper towel around. Start again. And this time I will do it in the appropriate order. <laughs> so I'm just going to go right back to this puddle. I put a lot of paint down here and I still have a lot of water so I'm going to blot. Do this part first and then I'm going to pick up a little more and then this part. I'm such a heavy hand. That was so... <laughs> when I'm doing it with you guys, I'm just too reckless. Yeah, that's better. Do it on the other side, too. And hopefully I was in the shot. I'm just blotting. I have way too much water in my brush. Because you can see it on the, um, so where do we want to go? On the bottom here. And I can get on here because that's going to be covered 
when we glue on the other, the, the B scap. Okay, so that's the wings shaded. We highlighted and shaded those stripes. I don't think anything happens to the black. Oh, we highlight it. It says, uh, paint the black stripes black and highlight along the top with titanium white. So I don't want a lot of paint. I just want enough to, because black, it's going to show up on the black. So I just want a tiny bit of titanium white. Float it across the bristles so that it's not just on the edge. I want it all. So here we go. Let's see how this turns out. All the bristles, see, and I just touched that was still wet, so be careful. I'm going to just go back to my runway. Same thing, I'm putting the, the chisel edge and pivot. It's bright, but I like it bright. That kind of looks a little bit like a line. So what you do is you use the mop to pull that dark line down into the water and I can always go back over it. This is where you're really going to see how you're loading the brush because it's going to show up so much on that black. I'm starting all the way over here. Starting to pivot back and leave my waterline up against the edge. I don't even know if I was in the shot. Now this brush is starting to get a couple of hairs that are like bugging me, but I'll just cut them off if they if they don't join the rest of the crew. <laughs> All right, so let's see. I'm gonna go back to the wings because I think we have to highlight the tops of the wings with titanium white because this is light buttermilk I think so we're going right back to that same color titanium white and now I can overload my brush because it's not going to show up as much as it did on the black do you know what I'm saying I know what I'm saying <laughs> all right so I'm heavy real heavy-handed I want this to pop and then just stop right at the black there I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom I have so much paint on my brush, you guys. I don't know if it would be shaded, highlighted there. Anywho, it's just a cutesy piece. Don't get too caught up in it. How important is it? It's going to be cute regardless. That's what you have to realize. And I'm just going to go here. And I got it on the brown. There we go. Okay. I can't really see it, but I'm going to put glitter and everything on those wings. Don't worry. What about this beard? Lightly shade the beard under the hat and along the bottom with a brush mix of cocoa and sable brown. So I'm just going to use sable brown. And it says under the nose. Oh, wait, does it? under the hat and along the bottom so see all right we're doing it sable brown load it up needed more water same thing I'm putting the chisel along that and then I'm going to pivot I want to go under the nose too. I'm just gonna. There's probably a reason she didn't want you to, but whatever. Because you know why? She's keeping it simple. She knows how to keep it simple. And I could have done that in three floats. So I could have just done here and stopped. And then here, and that's what I'm, I'm gonna take it off. And this is, watch. I don't like this. Take it off and go but I haven't painted in a really long time so I'm just out of practice and I'm trying to be too uh, hasty I have to pace myself take my time 
I'm going to reload my brush and do just under the hat. And then if I want a little bit around the nose, I'll come back. And this time I'm just going to stick it right here and go that way and right here and go that way and then she said at the bottom so this is going to be just like we did the stripes I'm going to put the chisel on the edge and start pushing along the bottom When you pity pat, you can pick it up too. So, but you can always go back in. It looks a little choppy. All right, so where are we? The wings are done. I could definitely pop up that uh, white a little better. I wonder how long this video is. 30 minutes already. I just really want it brighter. And then I could also brighten the top of that with a little buttermilk. I'm going to do it. The first time I had a brush mix, now it's just light buttermilk. I'm sorry, this is not, this is titanium white. So that is really bright now. I just touched that. Okay. So I think she wants a little bit of watermelon on the bottom of his nose. But I just want to put a little bit of this uh, sable brown right here. Then I have to figure out what I was going to use for watermelon. I don't think, um, I don't think I have anything that I, I don't have watermelon, but I think it's kind of a red. I'm going to use true red. Um, it's just for a little rosiness. There's like a bump here. There's like something on my piece. See that? I don't know what it was, like a fluff or something. I might sand that. I'm just being way too picky, but look how bright that red is. Red is such a wonderful color. It comes in so many shades. So I'm just gonna put this on my nose, right on top of that sable brown. Am I in the shot? That's good. But yeah, I think I want to take a piece of sandpaper almost and just see. I'm just being so ridiculous right now. But there is something bugging me. So I will fix it, and I'm going to go into black and fix that little The etching line it's really bugging me I don't think I'm a fan but for beginners I think you're gonna like it and then I'm um, just see there I just have to fix that again so was that sable brown the beard cocoa and sable brown And there's still definitely something on the piece, but 
that looks fine. All right. So I think we might be done. I got to do the flowers. So that's the lesson, you guys. That's the floating lesson. And what you want to do is just go around the whole piece, following her directions, using the colors that she tells you to use um, on all the pieces. Now, <clears throat> I'll do a flower with you because they're just smaller, but it's the same thing. Or let me do the B scap. Shade between the rings on the scap and along the left side with burnt sienna. Um, okay, so on the left side, you're going to go all the way down the left side and on the top, I'll show you. I love doing B scaps. All right, and I'm going to go down in size. I'm just going to do the, this with the 3 8 inch brush. I don't know why. That one was getting on my nerves. <laughs> I'm going to come in. So we're using burnt sienna. It's my favorite brown. Load that brush. Plenty of water. And do. I'm going to reload it because it seemed a little dry. It's a first, that was the first time I used it, so it probably was a little dry. Keep going back into that water. It still feels like it's not fully saturated with water. Leave the water line right up against the hole and then put the water line right up against the hole. I'm going to get more paint. I'm going right over his hand. And I can, whatever I got on the hand, which isn't a lot, and this is quite dark. That's good. And then, same thing. I'm a very much a pity pat floater. But if you take your time, it will work. Going back into water, my voice is going. <coughs> I don't know where it's going, but it's going. I love how I've painted B skeps before and I love how that looks. I'm gonna take a drink of water. I should have done up here too, but I hope I don't mess that up. So that's how it looks, and then I'm going to go along the hand, and let's see if she has us highlighting it, because, man, that'll make it pop. Let's see. Highlight along the top, which I just did. So I'll take that off. And down the left side. Well, that makes sense. I mean the right side. Um, let's see what it says. Highlight along the top, along the bottom of the left side, and oh, the center three rings, and along the right side to keep this of the scap with titanium white. Okay, so the bottom of the middle three, because that's going to give it roundness. Yeah, it's just interesting how she's going to get it to look how she wants to look. Get it to look. I should probably wait for it to dry, and it's titanium white. She said just this, these three. I have a lot of paint on my brush, but whatever. I'm going to go on the bottom one. I didn't really have very much water. See how I left the line? I had to clean it up.
I'm going to leave it up against the black, the waterline, right? I can always touch up the black or just push it away with my mop. Now I'm going to have to touch it up. A little bit of oh, waterline there. Hopefully I'm in the shot. All right, and then one more. See how much paint I have there? I have a lot of water too. I'm just going to set it right there. And then she wants it along the top. And then down the whole left side. And that kind of makes it look more rounded, doesn't it? Let me put some of this uh, by the hand. Oh, all the way down the side. Definitely looks a little more rounded that way. And just because I have, uh, let me just use a little round brush and the black. The black is out, so I'm just going to tap into it and just touch this up, make it real dark. That's that etching line. She actually has a tiny little float of the, let's see, oh no, it's burnt sienna, I'm sorry. Um, on this little handle right here, and right here. See how that just like separated it? And then I still need to highlight, which I'm just making sure that's dry. Um, I'll just do gently, very gently, which that's not in my nature, but, uh, I need more paint. All right, and then I'm going to call it, because you get the idea, that's the definite, I'm going to come back in a minute, I'll come back with the finishing, um, but this is too long of a video. Let's see. Whoops. I think that works. I think it looks be skeppy. Here's the picture. Always use your picture, guys. So you can use your picture if it looks darker to you. You can bump it up. So I might go back again and just darken it a little bit, you know. Um, then there's little dip dots. I'll come back with the dip dots and all that stuff. All right, let me come up. Thank you guys for watching. Let's put them together here so we can see where we're at. And I'll be back for the finishing. Um, I'm going to do these flowers. See how this goes. Um, the little B too. His feet go here. But he's starting to come together. I'll be back. Thanks for watching. All right, I just wanted to come back to share something. I messed up where I told you the shade on the hat was wrong. She said down the sides of the hat and I did along here. It either, it'll look fine either way, but I am gonna add some shading along the sides because that's what makes the something look rounded, like this way. Like it comes forward in the center and goes back on the side. I don't think it really matters. All it does is make the hat look a little lumpier. <laughs> Um, but I just wanted to share that I did 
say that wrong. Now, hopefully it's burnt sienna. Let me double check. I was just reading over, yeah, it's burnt sienna. What I had um, needed to do still, and I actually read it. Um, so I'm just going to show you what that looks like. So in other words, you're just going to go down the side of the stripe on the side of the hat, I should say. I mean, it makes it, it looks a lot darker, so hers looks so much brighter in the center. See how bright it looks? It's because she didn't put any um, burnt sienna along the bottom of the stripe. So I hope you stayed on long enough. To, and now I could just go across that with the base color, um, which is, I think, straw, and, and brighten it up too. So let me show you how I could do that. Eh, it's still going to be darker because there is color under there, but I'm just going to play around and see. So I'm loading my brush just in, I'm side loading, floating in golden straw. And I'm just going to pat that kind of right here. Let's see if it brightened it up. Kind of, yes it did. So, Please read the pattern. I'm so sorry. You guys, that was bad. I, I didn't read it the way she had it. So that's my bad. All right. But either way, it's going to look fine. He's cute regardless. All right. Probably made some other mistakes too. <laughs> that's it. Thanks for watching.